I am going to go ahead and get everybody going here. All right. I apologize for the little bit of a fussy baby in the background, if you can hear her. But hopefully she'll be happy soon. Okay. Let's scoot on back here. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and just begin. Um, find a comfortable position. And you can, I personally, I like to find that comfortable position on the back body. That's why I usually start out class on the back body. As much as, you know, there are a lot of benefits in sitting in Sukhasana like this, it, my whole life, it just has never felt quite right on my back. So I find meditating on the back body is just an easier way to go. So, but it is completely up to you. If you feel more comfortable seated, that is fine too, but just find that comfortable position. So I am going to go to the back body again. and just bring yourself down to the back body for I'm just gonna change one quick little thing on there there we go perfect now I can see everybody all right so I'm gonna come on down to the back body however you feel comfortable oh however you feel comfortable and just close the eyes and just bring the legs out in front of you or have the knees bent or even the soles of the feet together, whatever feels right. Just to begin class and just to begin with some breath work. So just take your time and just notice the breath. And just watch the breath moving into the body. Just really envision it. You can see it actually moving in and just envisioning it moving throughout the body as it comes in. Just bringing that fresh life to just every part of the body. And with this envisioning, just begin to deepen the breath. Just allow more air to move into the body. Allow it to do its work, to sweep through the body, to collect what no longer serves us. And as you exhale through the nose, just allow the lips to stay sealed. And slowly, even slower, just let that breath go. Really nice, big belly breaths. And just slow that breath. It's interesting, sometimes throughout the day, if we just take a moment and, and go back to this breath, just at any time, we notice sometimes how quick and shallow we just breathe on a regular basis. So seeing if we can just work to becoming more mindful not just on the mat, but just at any point in time, just to, just to deepen the breath. Slow the breath down. Just quiet the entire nervous system in the body. Quiet the entire body. So with this thought of the mindful breath, let's just notice where the mind actually is right now. Just take a moment and, and watch the mind. Just watch where it is. Don't necessarily try to push the thoughts away or clear the mind, but just watch where the mind is at. Just notice it. Notice whatever is on the mind and really pay attention to it and just watch it. And when we are able to do that, it actually 
brings us into the present moment when we actually take a moment and not just let the mind run but actually watch where the mind is at and make note of it we then are coming into the present just letting go of the past and letting go of what is next to come and just being with our thoughts now Let that breath become audible to you as you exhale. Just let it sound like an ocean or like a fogged mirror with the lips sealed. Just push every drop of air out of the belly. And then again, nice big inhalation. Fill the belly full. And then soften, just let it go. Envision a word or a phrase that brings peace to the mind. Just envision it. Let the mind wrap around whatever it is and just bring it into the body. Breathe it into the body and just feel lighter. Just let all the muscles soften. Just let everything go. Melt into the mat. And let the breath begin to ignite some movement in the fingers. Then the toes, Ooh. maybe a yawn. Oh, just take a full body stretch when you're ready. Nice, big full body stretch. You can point the toes, flex them out if that feels good, anything at all. Roll the wrists, make a couple of fists. Uh. And then just gently bring the feet up onto the mat. So just the soles of the feet are on the mat. The knees are lifted. And then just lift the pelvis up just a little bit. And then you can scooch it down just a tiny bit towards the feet. It's just envision a little longer spine here. A little bit of a longer spine. And then just relax again. Just take a breath in and notice the back body here. Notice the arch in the back, if there is an intense arch in the back or if it's begin to soften towards the earth. And if there is an intense arch, just begin to envision it softening. Envision the belly softening, envision that arch softening down. Take one full, nice big breath here. And we're going to open the mouth to sigh it out. So big breath in through the nose. We'll let it out through the mouth. One more time. Big breath in through the nose. Let it out. Walk the feet apart, just heel to the feet towards the edges of the mat, right at the edges of the mat. And then just allow for a nice, gentle windshield wiper here, but see if we can keep the hips kind of heavy. So the hips stay closer to the mat. We get a nice stretch through the quadricep here. You can take your time, maybe just allow it to just hang out on one side of the mat just feel a nice stretch through the hip and the quadricep and you can change the side just move where it feels good here oh and then go ahead and just walk the feet back together and we're going to pull the knees in towards the chest 
nice big hug. Little rock back and forth. Massage that low back. Lift the feet up towards the sky. Keep a nice bend into the knees if you'd like to. It's a little <clears throat> big, big stretch it might feel like early this morning. And then just gently pedal the feet back and forth. I'm jealous, Megan, that you're in New Jersey right now. It's this this is a comfortable time to practice yoga. <laughs> is that my name? 10 10 30 there? That sounds great. Uh Roll the feet out a little bit. Mm, you can drop the toes down and come into a happy baby pose here. So either happy baby pose, you can grasp the outsides of the feet if that feels easier. You can grasp the outsides of the thighs. Just let the shoulders get nice and heavy in your happy baby pose too. Nice and heavy. Mm, and then just Bring the feet gently back together. Pull the knees in towards the chest. Nice big hug. Let's open up the arms out to a T and just let the knees fall over towards the right. Let the knees fall over towards the right. I'm actually going to go with you guys exactly here. So knees are over to the right. And then let's actually take the left hand and we're going to bring it all the way over on top of the right hand. So they're kind of hands are clapped together. Watch out for your coffee if you have it handy here. And then we're going to windmill the arm here. So we're going to take that left hand and we're going to kind of windmill it all the way up and overhead. Oh, and all the way over to the left. And then bring it up and overhead and back clapping the hand together. So you're kind of making a little bit of a windmill movement here. So Hand goes up behind us into that twist and then bringing it back and just bring the hands back together. I'll show you guys a couple of times. Not totally sure, but just windmill it out and a hand back together. And then I'm going to go ahead and just find myself here in just a twist. So you can do that motion a couple of times if you'd like to. It feels really nice. And then when you're ready, just find stillness in a twist. And just let yourself be. Take a couple of <clears throat> nice big breaths in this twist. Just envision ringing everything out. Ring everything out. Let it all go. Very nice. And just bring the knees back up to center. Knees are going to come back up to center. And just kind of windshield wiper the knees back and forth a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and just bring the knees in towards the chest. Nice big hug with the knees. Kind of roll a couple of times on the low back. And just let the knees fall over towards the left. Fall over towards the left. And same motion that we did before. So that right palm is going to be on top of the left palm. And then just watch that right palm kind of move up overhead, kind of windmill it out, and come into the twist that way. Mm, very nice. And then bring the palms back together couple of times just like this, that, that nice gentle windmill twist. Couple times. Mm. One more time or as many times as you'd like to. And then just go ahead and just pause right here. You can gaze out over that right palm if it feels nice. Just to ring everything out and envision the breath moving through the body. Exhale, soften, just let it all go. Let everything go.
And on an inhalation, go ahead, bring the knees back up through center. Bring the knees back up and just kind of windshield wiper it out maybe a little bit. Mm, bring those knees back in towards the chest. Nice big hug. Let's go ahead and lift the feet up, bring the hands behind the legs. And your choice, you can either rock like this or you can come over to the side body and just bring your way up to a nice, comfortable seated position. Take your time to get there. Nice, comfortable seated position. Mm -mm. Mm. Feels good. Get that spine moving a little bit. And let's just play with the neck just a little bit here. So go ahead and just allow for that right ear to drop over to the right shoulder while we're here. Just pause and push that left shoulder back a little bit. Get a nice stretch. Go very gentle. I find myself very sore from this pose actually a lot. So that right ear is over towards the right shoulder and the left shoulder just pushes back a little bit, really get a nice stretch. And then just release that shoulder and just let the head come back up. And let's do the same thing, opposite side. So left ear is over towards the left shoulder and then we just gently push back with that right shoulder. Mm. And release the shoulder and bring the head back up and just go ahead, drop the chin down towards the chest. Just pause right here for a moment. Pause right here. Oh. Feel that length coming through the spine, through the base of the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head. And then just kind of gaze forward out in front of us. Pull the belly in and let's take a forward fold here. Let's take a nice forward fold. And if it doesn't feel good having the feet in the cross-legged position, you can move them out. But this is gonna be kind of a teaser for that, for that pigeon pose that Peter's excited about. So kind of getting you there. And then just go ahead and just walk yourself back up. Let's take the hands and just push them behind us. So let's start this time. The fingers are going to be facing behind us. So if that made any sense. So my fingers are back towards my recliners there. And I'm just pushing the hands into the earth. Just roll the shoulders up and back and just, oh, a nice little, little mini back bend here. Get ready for that bridge. And then just go ahead, pull the belly in and come on up. Shake the wrists out a little bit. Ah, those wrists, I'm telling you. Any yoga class, just a, just a thought, always a good idea to stretch the wrists out in before the class, I should say, just in case that the wrists don't get a stretch and you want a bunch of downward dog and that doesn't feel good on the wrist. So, Give them a little love. Okay, so let's switch the legs. Switch the cross of the legs to that weird way that it would be. And you can always sit on a bolster if that feels better. But just switch the legs up. Let's go ahead and go back to that neck and just begin just some gentle half moons here. Just roll that neck around a little bit. Roll the neck around, maybe take a nice big full circle. Change the direction of the circle. Mm. Oh, feels good. Feels good. And just bring the head up. Let's roll those shoulders. Let's start rolling them forward right now. Kind of pull the belly in as they roll forward. Pinch the shoulders together. Push it out, just find some movement that involves the back body as well here. Nice big exaggerated shoulder rolls. And then you can change the direction of those shoulder rolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, just let that relax. 
pull that belly in. Let's get nice and tall. Feel like we're lifting from the crown of the head. Let's gaze out in front of us as we do this forward fold. So rather than looking down, this time let's just look out in front of us and just look out in front of us, look out in front of us. And then when you feel like you're folded to a point where you are not wanting to fold anymore, let the head go. Let the head go. Should feel that nice stretch through that hip. Whatever foot you have forward should be feeling a nice stretch through that hip. Let the head go. Mm. And walk it back up. Walk it back up. Let's take those hands and we're going to do that behind us again. I'm going to sit like this so you guys can see a little easier. And this time I'm going to have the fingers. I'm going to start just kind of with the fingertips here. I push them into the earth. And then I'm going to slowly push the hands down onto the mat and kind of roll the shoulders back and pull those shoulders together. Let the head fall back. Just let yourself be. Mm, take a nice big breath here. Oh, and then just gently pull the belly in. Roll those fingers up and off of the earth and just roll it out a little bit. Roll it out. Very nice. Very nice. Hands should be feeling good. Let's come up onto the knees and onto those hands. And... Nice and wide, let's go ahead and make some cat cows. Just lift the tailbone, lift the gaze, breathe. Round it out. Few times. Nice big breath in, lift the tailbone, lift the gaze, breathe it in. Exhale, round. always pause maybe at one point in this if it feels good to just stay for a full breath maybe either in your cat or in your cow just see what feels good and then just guide the body into any way that feels good maybe more movement maybe some circles with the hips whatever you'd like here mm. and then eventually just make your way down into a child's pose sink down into child's pose. Let the head go. Really let the hips sink down nice and heavy. And let the heart and the chest just make its way closer to the earth or to the knees. And you can even wrap the arms back by the sides of the body if that feels good, just to encourage the shoulders to open up even more from the shoulder blades. Really just opening up through that upper back body this morning. Mm, just let it go. And then on your next breath, we're going to walk the hands forward and just walk them over towards the right hand side. Walk them over to the right. Get a nice stretch through the left. See if you can kind of almost pull back with that left hip. And then walk the hands over towards the left. Same thing, kind of tug back with that right hip. Just breathe. And then bring it back through center, bring it back through center. We're going to go ahead and slide forward Slide forward, excuse me, Petey. <laughs> all the way down onto the belly. All the way onto the belly. And I'm actually gonna use my blanket here and just let it be a nice little lift for my arms. So this is always an option for Sphinx pose, to have a blanket underneath the arms or a bolster. Just giving a little extra support. And then you can open up the legs if you'd like to. <laughs> I don't have much of a choice here with Petey. Um, but if it feels better, you can seal the legs up together. Your choice. So go ahead and just find your Sphinx pose. 
and lengthen through the back of the neck here. So rather than cranking the neck up high, just nice and long neck. Nice lift here through the body. And then go ahead and just gently bring that heart down, bring the chest down. I'm gonna scoot my blanket out of the way. And once again, I'm gonna bring the hands down. I'm gonna scoot them back a little bit. Your choice with the legs, they can either be together or apart. And then long neck, make your way into Cobra. Find a little lift here. Go ahead and bring it on down. Just for fun, let's go back up into Cobra again. See if we can lift the hands up with this Cobra. So rather than pushing hard into the hands, see if we can engage in the belly. Feel a little core work here. And then go ahead and bring it back down. And let's move back through the knees. Back into table pose. Back into table pose. Your choice, either stay right here in table or go ahead and tuck your toes and make your way into down dog. Just shake the neck out in down dog. Shake it all out. Mm. And if you want to stay in table, that is perfectly okay too. Your choice, table or down dog. But wherever you're at, let's just lift that right leg up. So either table or down dog, just lifting the right leg up. And let's step it all the way forward. All the way forward with the right leg. Hi, Petey. I might need to bring my knee down, big guy. We're going to... I'm going to flip my mat over so I get a little extra cushion on my knee. You can use a blanket here if you'd like to, and just make sure your ankle and knee are in line. And come into this low lunge here. So sinking down in your low lunge, lift up. You can bring the palm just right here if you'd like to onto the knee. That's perfectly okay up onto the thigh. You can lift up your hands up to the sky. Let the shoulders melt. Just take a nice full breath right here. Just gently float the hands down to the earth and sink back with the hips and lift up with that right toe. Take your time. Find some length through the back body. So again, kind of that, how we did on that forward fold earlier, envision lengthening from the back body, and then just let the head go. Mm. And then just sink back down into that right foot. Sink back down. Let's tuck the left toe underneath. Lift up with the left knee. And we're gonna step back again with the right foot. So step back, step back, back into that downward facing dog. Just take a nice full breath here. You can do table as well if that feels better. Totally an option. And then lift up with the left leg. Lift up with the left leg and we're gonna step the left foot forward. Step that left foot forward, maybe give it a little extra nudge. And take your time. Bring that right knee down onto the mat when you're ready. Left ankle is directly over the left. Left knee is directly over the left ankle. Just sink it down, square off through the hips. And when you're ready, lift. Take a nice full breath in. Big breath. Oh, gently bring the palms down. Sink back. Lift up with the left toes. Find some length. Full breath in and exhale. Remember, kind of lengthen through that back body. You can gaze out towards the toes. Get that nice stretch. And then gently sink back down. 
tuck through the right toe, <laughs> lift up with the right knee. And this time we're actually just gonna step forward a little bit and kind of pivot on the feet so that you're just in a wide-legged stance. I'm gonna turn around so I can see everybody, but just a nice wide-legged stance here is what we're gonna come into. Just take your time. Just bring the hands on the hips for a moment. Feet are facing forward. Take a nice big breath in. And just exhale, just find a forward fold here. Find a forward fold. You can bring the hands onto the earth. You can let the head go. Mm. Just breathe. And then just begin to kind of heel toe the feet in towards one another so it's not quite as a wide-legged stance. And just pause when they're a little wider than hips with distance apart. Let's grasp onto opposite elbows. And same thing, just forward fold, really just let everything go. Can find a little bit of a lift through the hips here if it feels good. Don't want to lock the knees out necessarily, but if it feels good to begin to straighten through the knee and just really lift through the back of the legs. And then again, just bring the hands down and heel toe those feet together, all the way together. Forward fold. Just rock it back and forth. And just bring the hands down. Little bend into the knees. Rise all the way up. All the way up. Bring the palms up towards the sky. Gaze up towards the sky. And then bring the palms to the heart center. Very nice. So we can go ahead and just pivot so that we're facing the front of the mat again. Maybe step towards the front of the mat. And just lift through the palms, lift through the gaze, breathe it in. Exhale, forward fold. Hmm. Bring the palms up to the shins. Find that nice little bit of length. And exhale, forward fold. Now, this is going to be an option. We're going to bend the knees and find chair pose. So let that be one option to you. And if this just does not feel good, you can always keep the hands down and just gently make your way down. So one option is chair pose and just really ignite and we're gonna sink all the way down. If that does not feel good on the knees, that is okay. Just gently sink down and we're gonna make our way onto the bum. All the way onto the bum. Take your time. If it feels good to stay in chair pose and really sink down slowly, that's an option too. So I'm gonna have my bolster handy. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a bolster, but I'm gonna show a couple of different versions of bridge pose. So bridge pose, historically, the classic version of bridge pose, we're gonna have our feet on the mat. We're gonna just begin to gently lift through the tailbone and kind of walk your shoulders underneath you. And then you can connect through the hands. Really push into the feet and find a nice lift. So this is one version of bridge pose, which does feel wonderful. So another version is if you have that bolster handy, bolster or even a block, Bring it right underneath the sacrum. You can use one bolster, two bolster, one block, two blocks, but bring it underneath the sacrum. And this is called a restorative bridge pose. It's a nice one. And then you can actually even walk the feet out and you can lay here in this restorative bridge pose for a nice long time. I think one of these days we might need to do a restorative class over Zoom. I think that could be really fun. So I'd have to do a little workshop with that one day. So this is an option as well. So a restorative bridge pose can feel really nice. 
or of course the classic one. One thing that's fun also, I'll just show a little thing. If you do have a bolster underneath the hips or a pillow, is just to lift the feet up here. Feels really, really nice. So you can lift the feet up to the sky, you can bicycle the feet a little bit. You can even do this, of course, right next to the wall and just come into Supta Baddha Konasana, or excuse me, not Supta Baddha Konasana, the legs up against the wall. My mind is blanking on the pose name, but have legs up against the wall, kind of for a savasana, basically. So let's bring the feet down. And if you have a bolster underneath the sacrum, just gently bring it out. Oh, and just come back down onto the belly. And we're going to just roll over onto the side body and just sit our way up and make our way back into table. And this way, we can make our way into our ever so fabulous pose of pigeon. So I like to get into my pigeon from downward facing dog. You can always do it from table as well, or you can do it from the back body. If you're not a huge pigeon goer, that is okay. So but to find your way into pigeon from downward facing dog, how I like to get there is I lift up with that right leg. I bring it over the right knee to that right wrist. Kind of walk back with the left foot and make sure there isn't any coffee or anything behind you. <laughs> Square through the hips. Square the hips off, gaze forward, and just gently make your way down. Feel free to use a bolster or a block or anything at all that feels good. Just Breathe. Let go. And then take your time. We'll gently tuck through that left foot and bring the palms up onto the mat. Oh, send the right foot up, maybe stack it once. Make a circle. And just bring that foot down. We're gonna go ahead and make our way to the opposite side. So left foot lifts. You can do this again from table or down dog, your choice. Bring that knee forward. Go ahead and walk back, scooch back with the right leg. Maybe even walk that left ankle just up a tiny bit, but keep the hips squared off. Just find your forward fold. That nice, comfortable forward fold. Make your way there. <sighs> Let go. And then go ahead, just tuck through that left foot, or excuse me, through the right foot, give a little lift, bring the palms onto the earth. Oh, nice, big lift. And send that left leg up and back. Again, you can do this from table too, if that's easier. Or downward dog, whatever feels good. And then just bring the knee down onto the earth. Bring both knees down, maybe a cycle of cat-cow, any posture that the body might be craving. Just go ahead and let yourself experience it, anything at all. Just take your time and enjoy it. Take your time, enjoy anything at all that the body might be craving. And when you're ready, 
Just get all of your items together that you would like for Savasana. Maybe a blanket. I might bring my bolster into it and bring the bolster underneath the knees. That's a nice way to take Savasana sometimes. Just a nice restorative Savasana. Go ahead and just find a posture that feels comfortable for you. Mm. And gently make your way there. Take as much time as you need to get here. If there's a couple other postures that you'd like to experience, go ahead and do so. But otherwise, just make your way here. A nice, comfortable savasana. And just begin to breathe. Just to notice the breath for a moment. Let it just move through the body, just cleanse everything, and then just let go. Just release the breath. Just no worries. Just come back to that natural state of breathing. Let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth and let the eyes soften. Let everything be. And just stay here for several minutes. Stay here as long as you'd like this morning. Find any comfortable savasana. And just allow the body to absorb the benefits of your practice. Allow yourself to be quiet. To just be. I wish everybody a peaceful day and a peaceful weekend. I'm sending everybody so much love. And I am so grateful to everyone for sharing their morning with me. Peace be with you. Be happy. Be free. Namaste.